Welcome to Seller's Journey, the podcast where we speak to great sales reps and leaders and share their real stories from start to sales success. Hi, everybody. I'm Joseph Fung, and today we're speaking to Michael Galliano, who's the head of SMB sales at Hashtag Paid. And today's going to be a fantastic conversation because Michael is also a fantastic community builder, uh, as well as a startup sales coach, and has had such an incredible journey. Michael, thank you for joining us. Absolutely, Joseph. Glad to be speaking with you today. Now, Michael, I've had the good fortune of seeing some of your fantastic work firsthand, uh, your your work co-organizing sales CEO, uh, your work with Startup Laurier. Uh, these are all fantastic, fantastic endeavors, but maybe you could help our audience get to know you better. Um, first and foremost, hashtag paid. What is it? Can you give us an elevator pitch? For sure. I'll keep it short and sweet. So we're a Toronto startup and direct-to-consumer brands like your Casper or Native Deodorant, uh, they turn to hashtag paid and our platform to scale their influencer marketing programs. So we have a network of thousands of creators, vetted social content creators, and we match the most relevant creators to those brands for them to scale their influencer marketing programs through our platform. Now, I have to ask, I know this isn't a show about pitching, uh, but we do have a lot of entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, small business owners who, who listen in. Is this a service primarily for large businesses like deodorant makers, or does it work as well for smaller enterprises? So the, the team that I lead, it's, it's a team we launched about eight, nine months ago, is specifically for small businesses. So most of our customers in that space are really small, three employees, five employees, 10 employees. Um, and so we're really building a platform tailored to small businesses and startups where they can scale influencer marketing without having to build out a team like you'd find at Adidas, you know, with a, a 15 person influencer marketing team. So um, I've seen uh, as small as a one person company, a CEO using our platform um, and, uh, and getting some great results, driving purchases of, of his product on e-commerce. So that's been awesome to see. I am so looking forward to, to our conversation and kind of following that journey all the way to your head of sales role, because I've got some questions I want to get to on that, but let's rewind. Let's kind of go back to the, the beginning. Where'd you grow up? Where did you go to school? For sure. So I grew up in Toronto um, and then um, in first year moved to Waterloo and attended Wilfrid Laurier University. So I, I joined the School of Business and Economics, did an honors uh, undergrad in, in business um, and, mm -hmm. and specialized in, in marketing there. And um, I think that's where I fell in love with the, the tech community. And, and you'll know this um, with your time in, in Waterloo. But over the last 10 years, it's, it's been uh, amazing to see what's come out of Waterloo. And, and so I got to spend about five years from 2009 to 2014 um, being involved and in getting immersed and, and, uh, and creating a passion for, for tech uh, in Waterloo. I love it because, you know, when we, we look at your journey, that enthusiasm for tech is so evident and being steeped in it myself, I, I think it's the best place to start. Uh, but startups aren't the only place. Your your first role out of school wasn't really at a startup, was it? Maybe maybe you could share with our audience, you know, your, your time at Microsoft and what that role was like. For sure. So I got to spend uh, my, my last two co-op terms uh, at Laurier with Microsoft with Microsoft in uh, Mississauga. And that was my first marketing role. Um, I thought that, you know, over the last few years at that point, I wanted to be in marketing. I got to be a part of a, a really exciting team and launch products like Windows 8 and, and the, the new phone. Um, and so that's, I think, where around that time where I really knew I wanted to be working full time at a tech company. And shortly after I finished there, I had one last term uh, at Laurier, uh, for the summer term, and then I, I graduated. Um, and at that point, um, I knew I wanted to be at a tech company, but I, I, I also knew that a large company wasn't for me. Um, I found that it was a little bit too slow to get decisions made. I wanted to have more ownership, more accountability. And so around the beginning of 2014, um, before I took my, my first role at, at Uber, 
Uber flip, um, I was considering moving to San Francisco. And so I, one night I, I just woke up, I booked a, a ticket to San Francisco by myself um, and started finding interviews at a bunch of different tech companies there. Um, around the same time, I had been interviewing uh, at Uberflip um, and, uh, and actually was interviewing for a marketing role because I knew nothing about sales, never heard of an SDR. Um, and, uh, and so I ended up passing on an opportunity um, in San Francisco to, to join the team and, and build up sales at Uberflip. Okay, so let me get this right. You wake up, decide that maybe you don't want to be at a big company. So your next step is to buy an airplane ticket to San Francisco. Did I get that right? <laughs> Pretty much. I, uh, you know, I took a little bit of a risk. I, I slept on a friend's couch for, uh, for four or five days, interviewed at a bunch of different companies, um, and then came home and, and um, made my decision around you know, what was going to be my first full-time role. Okay. Now, for some people, this might sound like a completely irrational decision, but you know, I mentioned earlier you spent some time with Startup Laurie, and in that context, this makes complete sense. Maybe you can help our audience understand what is Startup Laurier and you know what was your role in in co-founding that organization. It was uh, it's an organization that is still running today, ten years later. Something that I'm I'm very proud of actually. And we saw myself, uh, my co-founder, Anthony and I, we saw a great opportunity at Laurier within Waterloo for Laurier students, not just business students, art students, science students, kinesiology students to contribute to the entrepreneurial community. And so we spent a lot of time in the first couple of years of our undergrad uh, meeting people at University of Waterloo, which was just thriving with the startup culture, with with programmers, engineers, people developing companies. Um, and we didn't see that same spirit at Laurier. And there was no clubs really focused on entrepreneurship. And so we, we launched Startup Laurier. The, for the first year or two, our name was Laurier uh, Innovation and Technology Club. We rebranded to Startup Laurier. Um, and we launched it to support Laurier students to bridge the gap between tech and business and to help them to launch their own company. So we did some, some great events. We, we ran entrepreneurship competitions. Um, we brought on companies like Google and Facebook for the first time ever uh, on Laurier's campus. Um, and from that, we helped a lot of students launch their own companies, give out prize money, um, and, and it was a lot of fun. And it's, it's awesome to see 10 years later, it's still operating and, and every so often it winning club of the year. So I definitely... Uh, stay in touch with the group there. So I think given that experience, uh, I mean, the contribution to the community is huge. And so I can really see how you you found that role as a community builder. And your role in marketing at Microsoft, I think, makes a lot of sense, you know, given the the education. What was that interview process like at Uberflip? You know, what what had you switch from looking at a marketing role to looking at a sales role there? Because that must have been a deliberate decision at some point. Yeah, exactly. I think this is something that I'd love you know, to share with your, your listeners because it taught me that you can go into an SDR or sales role with any background and, and any experience um, if you have the right mindset and are, are willing to learn and, and put in work. And so um, right around that time, my last month or two at Laurier, um, I decided with a couple friends to launch a Kickstarter project. We'd never done one before. And we launched a Kickstarter called Wise Words, where we designed 40 unique cards. Um, and, uh, and they had people like uh, Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa, Albert Einstein, Michelangelo, um, and some of their best quotes. And so we did a, a, a fundraising campaign where we um, were looking for 6K. I think we did 140% of our goal. And right around that time was when I was interviewing at Uberflip. And so I went into that interview for a marketing manager role because I, I knew I wanted to be in marketing. Uh, I told the founders and the head of marketing uh, about my Kickstarter program. I actually brought one of our products in to show them and, and leave there. Um, and they asked me, they said, we think you're a, a great culture fit for our company. Um, May, you don't have the right skill set for this inbound marketing role, but have you considered sales? And we are just launching and hiring uh, our first SDR team. And we have a director of business oh. development who's launching that. 
And so I said, what's an SDR? What's sales? I really didn't know anything about it. And they saw that, you know, if, if, and they told me this, if you're able to, to drive thousands of dollars uh, of, of sales of a, of a card business to 30 countries around the world, you know, you can sell our software. And so I, I met with the director. Um, I learned about the SDR role and I, I took the, the plunge, joined as the first SDR. Um, and uh, there wasn't much of a playbook. So it gave me the opportunity to really learn by doing. And, and so it was um, like a lot of us that go into the go into sales, we kind of accidentally get into it. Um, and I uh, haven't looked back since. Okay, so your time at Uberflip, if you if you look at the uh, kind of LinkedIn bullet points, it reads almost like a cliche, like SGR one year, AE the next year, close a million bucks, enterprise AE. I mean, it sounds uh, almost uh, archetypal, uh, but I'm sure there were surprises in there. You know, what what were some of the, the wrinkles or, or what surprised you about that journey at Uberflip? For, for sure. Um, it was a great success. I was there just under three years. Um, but like, like I said, when I joined, you know, I was the only SDR. And so um, we had one or two AEs at the time. And it was quite hard to, to learn what to do, how to do the job. And so I remember back there are days where I would just have a, a long uh, list in, in, uh, in Excel of people's names and phone numbers and just start calling alphabetically and get you know, rejected a hundred times in a row. Um, and I think that experience and, have, and finding some mentors along the way, listening to, to audio books, reading podcasts, um, helped me to figure out what to do. So there was a lot of rejection, uh, a lot of um, figuring things out, figuring out what should our pricing model be. We started off with $50 a month price point. When I left Uberflip, you know, we were selling deals at $5,000 a month. So to, to, to figure that out along the way was an amazing experience. Um, a lot of challenges and, and mistakes. Um, but I think that first year of just grinding and hustling in that SDR role um, to, to, to create meetings, to create conversations um, gave me the best foundation for the next six years. So. I'm going to speed up and go kind of zoom forward a little bit because I know you moved on and you picked up a team lead role, a sales manager role, uh, all of these in quick succession. And, and now you're the, the head of sales at, at another company. So three great tech companies. You've got all this responsibility. When you look back at your journey, you know, how do you, how do you apply that in your hiring? You know, how has your journey informed the way you hire now at Hashtag Paid? I think for, for one thing, not having uh, any biases around someone's background. And um, when I moved into my first manager role at Shutterstock, uh, I had seven, six or seven other peers in sales manager roles. And I was definitely the, the youngest of the group, I think at 26 or so uh, at the time, 26, 27. And so you know, right now when I'm hiring, whether it's supporting to hire SDRs or AEs, um, really keeping an open mind about people's backgrounds um, and even not caring if they come from a sales background. And I think I've seen great successes, um, people going into SDR roles, coming from all sorts of different previous experiences. So what's more important to me is that that person has the right mindset, but has some track record of success. So I've, I've seen SDRs, successful SDRs come from restaurant server backgrounds. Um, there was one at my previous company um, who was an Olympic swimmer and, and finished her athletics and came into an SDR role. And you know, that was somebody that practiced and worked consistently at something for 10 plus years um, and had that, that perseverance and passion. Um, and so those are some of the things that I look at. Um, and seeing how quickly I grew from my first SDR role to my current role in, in about seven years, um, just having that open mind for, for every sales hire that I interview. Wow. And as you, as you reflect and keep that perspective in mind, uh, I, th I can imagine that advice resonating not just with the people that you hire, but the broader community. So if we think about that experience and how you translate it, uh, what would you think are some of the biggest lessons you picked up along your journey? Um, I'd say two two lessons. So one is really leveraging 
LinkedIn and, and building your personal brand. And it's something that I've invested more into over the last while. Um, I'd encourage anyone starting off to, to build your brand today and to invest time to post every day on LinkedIn, to build a community around yourself, to engage with people, um, to build a, a personal site and to, to get active on Twitter as well. I've found so many opportunities from Twitter and, and LinkedIn, my second startup, um, I found out about them um, as the co-founder reached out to me on, on LinkedIn. Um, and so I'd say building your personal brand is so incredibly important. Um, I, uh, I just last week put up a, a, a new banner on my profile and want to take advantage of that real estate. Um, I, I, I think the second piece of advice um, I'd have is, um, is around uh, leveling up when it comes to learning and, and writing as well. And so I think I learned the lesson about writing, um, you know, over the last little while. But I would say that keep practicing your writing um, and writing on social selling, writing LinkedIn posts, writing blog posts that goes into building your personal brand um, and then never stop leveling up, whether that's finding relevant podcasts. I just wrote a blog post a couple of weeks ago about Skilling up and skilling up during COVID-19 is, is a great time with so many free courses online right now. Um, so I think this is the perfect time to level up and learn some new skills and, and practice your writing. Um, so those are a couple lessons that I'd leave people with. Uh, I, I love the fact that you mentioned those, uh, the idea of le leveling up by listening to podcasts as we, we speak about that on a podcast. Clearly, our audience is uh, ahead of the curve uh, in terms of meeting your goals. So I love that. Uh, thinking, thinking a little bit about all these all these lessons, there's such a wealth of information there. And I'd, I'd really like to, to pause for a moment to highlight for our audience that Michael is so accessible and has such a great wealth of experience that He's really worth reaching out to and following on, on LinkedIn, his involvement in the community, uh, because there's just so much knowledge there. And he's really exemplified that idea of an accelerated journey through sales. So I wanted to do a quick shout out there. But Michael, you're still early on in your journey, and there's still a lot of runway ahead of you. So would love you to cast your eyes forward. Where are you heading? What's on your bucket list? Whatever cliche you want to think of, what what do you aspire to still accomplish? I think the the first thing on my list there is um, is is building my own business, and I've gotten to to help create and 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 scale up um, three different startups now and some larger companies before that, um, and so I think being able to create something from scratch. Um, test the initial hypothesis, find our very first few customers and, and operate outside of sales as well is something that uh, I'm very interested in and starting to put some thought into in terms of different you know, side hustles and, and ideas. Um, I, one of my first articles that I wrote this year was about living a polymathic life. And so one of my goals over the, the, the course of my next 60, 70 years really looking long term is to become a deep generalist. And a polymath is someone who is someone who has mastered at least three different domains. Um, so I've been over the last few months very uh, interested in, in data science and AI and starting to add a second discipline that I can add a lot of value to and, and, and build with. So I think those are a couple of things that are top of mind for me building my own business and becoming more of a polymath or, or deep generalist um, as I become a, 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 an operator, not just from sales uh, as a sales perspective, but from um, all of the different aspects uh, of running a business um, and, and, and also embracing the, the arts and the creativity as well. So um, those are two main things that, that I've been thinking about. So for what it's worth, Michael, you said adding a second discipline, but I'd argue you've already added to at least two. Uh, when I look at your experience on the Alzheimer's Society board, co co organizing sales TO, startup laureate, your your ability to deliver as a community catalyst, I'd say is already a second discipline there. So make sure you you don't sell yourself short there. Uh, maybe the 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 kind of AI and, and data science degree is uh, more of the third than just the second. Uh, Appreciate that. Now. now 
I know I said we wouldn't keep you too long, uh, and I, I, I want to stay true to that, but can I ask a couple of rapid fire questions before we let you go? Shoot, let's do it. Cool. Okay. You've been in a ton of companies, you used a ton of tech. What is your favorite sales tool? Without a doubt, it's got to be LinkedIn. Um, not even necessarily Navigator, just plain old LinkedIn um, has been incredibly valuable for a couple of the reasons that I mentioned. Um, not only for building your own community, your, your, your own influence, but just adding value to prospects and, and to people's lives. Um, and so there's so many opportunities from, from LinkedIn. Um, if, if they made me pay for it for the general license, I would pay for it. It's so valuable. Well, you got to be careful in that uh, hopefully the team from LinkedIn doesn't hear this because you might get yourself an invoice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, movies, films, what's your favorite movie? Uh, I got to go back to the, the 70s and say The Godfather Part 1. Uh, a great classic, a favorite for a lot of people, but it's it's one of my favorites. Nice. And if you cast your mind back to your earliest days when you were a kid, what did you want to grow up to be? An architect. Um, I always love real estate and, and buildings and architecture. Um, and so it's something that I eventually want to be able to, to invest in or, or be a part of um, just creating buildings and, and architecture. So um, that's something I thought about early on. Well, as a, as a community builder and a catalyst, that doesn't actually surprise me. What a, <laughs> what a delightful answer. Thank you. Of course. Uh, Michael, this has been great. Uh, happy happy to have you on the show happy that we had this conversation and i'm so excited to be be part of your journey and see where you land next thank you for your time and sharing today my my pleasure joseph appreciate you having me on and uh excited to stay in touch with you absolutely i'm looking forward to our next conversation i hope you have a wonderful day thank you take care ciao